Welcome to the BP Fallon Oakster, and I'm enormously happy to have uh, this guest this evening. I'm very, very pleased. I'd like to welcome you now, Ted Hawkins. Uh, you're very welcome here. Thank you. So what we're going to do, Ted has his guitar here in uh, the BPFO in the pit, but first of all, we're going to play, uh, we're going to play a track of uh, Ted Hawkins' record, and uh, this is Ted Hawkins here in Watch Your Step. Watch your step Before you stumble and fall You promised daddy true love and sugar And that ain't all Caught you taking it easy, baby With a one-night affair Hop, skipping and jumping, baby Head high in the air Watch your step Like you're supposed to do Can't meditate on you, baby and your boyfriend too I caught you kissing and hugging the dog All dressed in black Tell me what would entice you, baby To do a thing like that Well, something on my mind I can't understand Your arms open with your squirming body a Kissing some other man Think I can take it You're mistaken my heart's breaking, I ain't faking, well why don't you squeeze me, like I told you to, your kind of loving baby, just won't do, get up and get over here, sit on your daddy's knee, take all night long sugar, gotta make you see, listen to daddy sugar, Got something to say I don't mind the things you do, sugar If you do it my way You're just like muddy, honey Jumping from hand to hand Gotta stop all this messing and dressing Switching from man to man Well, something on my mind I can't understand your arms open with your squirming body a Kissing some other man Think I can take it You're mistaken My heart's breaking I ain't faking there you go, that's, uh, that's Ted Hawkins there in the acoustic version of Watch Your Step. Well, as I said at the beginning of the show, Ted, you're very welcome here. I'd like to uh, ask you, if I may, where are you actually from? Where I'm from? Yeah. Uh, originally? Yeah. I'm from Mississippi, Biloxi, Mississippi. And what was it like growing up there? It was hell. Was it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Could you explain that to me, please? Well, um, I had to uh, fend for myself. I had to, to raise myself. How come? Uh, I didn't have a mother. I had a mother, but, you know, it takes more than just M-O-T-H-E-R to make a mother. Right. And uh, my mother um, was a uh, drunken, foul-mouthed prostitute that didn't have time for her boys. I had um, three brothers, which I don't know who, where they are as of now. Is that a heartache? Well, it used to be, but um, I um, just take the bitter with the sweet. Right. And, uh, I can't um, worry about that. You right. know, and about the hard time that I've had. I've got to thank God for letting me live uh -huh. you know, to carry on. And was your father away all the time as well, or did you ever know him? I've never seen him. Uh -huh. My father wanted a little girl, and I was told that he wanted a little girl, and I came out a boy, so he, he split. <laughs> oh dear. And what was it like growing up in Miss Mississippi, apart from the difficulties uh, with your folks? Was it tough down there then? There was always difficulties in everything that I um, tried to do. It was hard on me. I had to eat. I had to feed myself. And that was 1936, um, you know, during the... Um, Depression. Right. I don't know how long the depression, the oppression, depression lasts, but uh, it seemed like to me it was for a lifetime. You know, and eating out the garbage can. A little boy. I, I developed the name Dirty Junior. Dirty Junior. <laughs> uh. Yes. And uh, how old were you when? I mean, may I ask you? Do you mind if I ask you how old you are now, Ted? I'm fifty now. Uh, I'm yeah. proud of it. So, so you should be. <laughs> and how old were you when you when you started fending for yourself and everything like that? As far as I can remember back. Forever, really? I've always uh, done for myself, even after I've grown up. Nobody uh. had never done nothing for me at all. And what about stuff like schooling? Did you have any of that? I tried to go to school, but they uh, ran me away because of the fact that they, they didn't like the way I pester their children for their lunch. Oh, really? You know, um, it, it looked and smelled so good. I wanted some of it, you know. And I was um, 
I was facing starvation, man. I almost starved to death. And how did you go and get food then? Uh, there was places like um, behind the store where they throw out uh, bananas and oranges and apples and stuff that has uh, rotted. I take my fingers and uh, put, you know, dig out the rot, throw it away, and eat the rest. I'd go behind places like Chris's and Woolworths, which you guys like. What, what's that? The five and ten cent store that you guys probably don't know about no. here. Um, but there are five and ten cent stores downtown. You know, called Cress's, Woolworks, J.C. Penney's, and oh, places yeah. like that. They throw, they got a big long um, trash can out, in at out back. I, I remember climbing up into the trash, you know, looking among the trash, and I, I'd find broken cookies that they couldn't sell, uh-huh. you know, uh, and candy and popcorn and stuff like that. And that's why I don't have hardly no teeth today. <laughs> chewing on that candy. I'd go down by the waterfront and I'd get me a string and um, behind the store I'd get a piece of raw meat tied on a string and make myself a net. I'd go down to the um, waterfront and stick the, drop it down in the uh, water and catch crabs. You guys know what crabs are, don't Yeah, you? I know what crabs are, yeah. I'd pull up crabs and I would uh, boil them and eat the crabs, pick up pecans. What's that now? Pecans um, is a nut nut that grew on a tree uh, and um, um, money was um, very scarce and how did you get yeah. any money money um, I don't know I I was molested quite a bit and I would I would get it like that I was I was I was explain that Ted. I've been molested um, by um, grown-ups of over 20 or 25 different grown-ups in my young you know eight nine ten what well, this 12. is men is it yes and women uh. <laughs> I've, I, I always had been, you know, big for my age. But, you know, I, I, I'm not like everybody else. I don't sit around and not do nothing with my life to, just because I've been molested. You know what I mean? As long as life lasts and death passes, there's hope. People use that for a crutch to not do nothing with their life. Oh, I can't do anything because he touched me right there. Later for that. You know, you, you're living today. Get up off your behind, man, and, and, and go to work and make something out of yourself. Uh, the first time that happened to you when you were molested, you must have been absolutely freaked, were you? Uh, very, very, uh, well, I don't know, if, I, I, it caused me a, quite a bit of pain at eight years of age. Got that early? Yeah. It's vicious, isn't it? Vicious. And what did they do, give you money then? Yeah. Yeah. God. So now, if I can pull, up, pull myself up by my own bootstrap, and I was hurt, certainly some woman can uh, pull herself by, up by her own bootstrap just because she was touched. Well, he, touched my, he, he touched my my titty, so I can't make it. Uh, of course you can make it. But at the same time, it's very disturbing, I'm sure. Yeah, well, that, um, you, it, life is disturbing. If it ain't one thing, it's another. Every time you look around, it's something. You can't just pinpoint one thing. I think that this world is full of um, uh, uh, violence. I think, that, I think violence is more disturbing than sexuality. You know what I mean? I think uh, if I'm going to catch you and um, beat you up, break your nose and bust your lips and knock your teeth out and take your, the little money that you work hard to earn, I think that's, that's very, very terrible. And it should mess up your mind more so than a, a sexual offense. Uh. Violence is what's, what, what get on my nerve. I think we all should love one another, you know. Right. Well, before we uh, continue talking about your life, Ted, and everything like that, I would like to have to introduce another track now by Ted Hawkins. Okay. And this is uh, this is sorry.
Nick and Ted is here in the BPFO. Ted, we were talking about uh, we were talking about your very turbulent childhood and everything like that. Um, you were saying you were molested by people and, and, and they'd give you money and something and stuff like that. Did uh, did you kind of find that a way of making a living after a while then? Well, um, not exactly making a living. I didn't like it, oh. you know, and well, there's a whole lot more that occurred that I didn't like. You see, um, there's always been three strikes against me. Three? You know, you know, but, you know, uh, but... Um, what I was trying to convey is that um, um, I don't think that uh, um, that I should uh, let that bother me. I still got my legs, you know. I still got my feet. I still got my health and strength. Although it do bother me, you know, sometime. Although it did kind of uh, mess my life up, my, my mind up, you know, like the psychiatrists say it would. Uh -huh. But that don't mean I'm going to sit down and not do nothing with my life, just just because that occurred. Sure, I get flashbacks, you know, and all that, but I'm not gonna worry you to death, and uh, um, uh, uh, if I get a girlfriend, not let her touch me because that happened in the past. Right. I got sense enough to think beyond that. Right. You know. Right. So what's going on with my life? What was the, uh, the first kind of job you had? Did you ever have a, a proper job? Uh, washing dishes. Really? How old were you when you were doing that? Um, I tried to start doing it at about um, about 13, but I wasn't fast enough. I didn't know. See, if you look around, we need some cups. We, we, and I get the cups. We need some spoons. I said, well, I'm taking care of the cups. You know, <laughs> we need some monkey dishes. We, we, we need some plates. And the guy would stop doing what he's doing. And, you got to be fast, man. You, you, come on. Come on. Ted, you got to be fast. I try to be fast. I'm dropping the, 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 the uh, dishes and breaking them, cutting my hand. And I just walked out. Really? <laughs> and what was the next step then? I had a job um, um, when I started um, traveling. I, I traveled to Buffalo, New York in a steel foundry where, where they, um, that iron, they, um, they melted iron. Right. It was hot. I bet it was. Man, it was hot. I, I had to pour that stuff at a long dipper. Yeah. It was heavy, you know, and I had to pour it into different... Um, molds or something? Molds, yeah. And, and the molds was as far as your eyes can see. Wow. And I had to fill up all those molds. And what were they making there, Ted? Uh, Sometimes cast iron, um, this or cast iron, that you know, uh, one thing or the other. And were the working conditions dreadful then? Very, very dreadful. And uh, um, I left there without even getting my pay. Really? Because I'd have to stop my work many times and uh, I'd have to uh, go outside and sit down, you know, outside on the steps. Right. You know. Which I'm sure they didn't like that. They didn't like that, but it was so hot in there. You know, when you cough and spit up, you spit up that black set, uh -huh. steel and stuff. And how long did you stick that for? Oh, mm, about two weeks. But <laughs> yes. well, can I ask you this, Ted? Uh, did a place like that take advantage of black folk who were looking for work? In, where, I, where I was working? Yeah, the steel foundry. Well, it was good for them. I mean, it seemed like to me everybody could make it except me. <laughs> you know, everybody else was doing fine. Uh. The heat didn't seem to bother nobody else. And I did, just couldn't make it. And did you ever have any? Uh, did you have any difficulties about being a black man? Well, if anybody should have difficulties, you know, I should. But again, I'm not going to let that stop me. Sure, I, w I was born in Mississippi, and there was a time uh, when uh, uh, the governor Wallace and stuff was there, and you know, and the the prejudice and the uh, you, 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 the nig nigger would have to go around to the back, and you know, why it only this and why it only that? Sure, but um, I didn't let that stop me. I'm surprised to hear you using a word like nigger, actually. I can say it, because it don't bother me. Uh, it's just another word. A nigger, you... can, a nigger can be any color, not just black. A white man can be a, a nigger. I think a nigger is a dirty, low-down, rotten, stinking person who don't want to do... I mean, that would do somebody wrong. Right. right. And did you get called that? Many times. And how did you react? Because it must be very difficult to... Well, when they say, hi, nigger, I say, what do you say? Trigger. <laughs> no, my name is not Trigger, man. Uh, uh, my, my name is Ted Hawkins. I said, nigger, Trigger, what? Come closer. Tr Don't get smart with me. I said, nigger, and you heard me. Oh, oh, 
Oh, ho, 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 nigger, nigger. Oh, okay, bye. Uh. <laughs> but they don't have no fun with me because <laughs> I don't get mad. Because, <laughs> I mean, you're quite a you're tall chap, aren't you? How tall are you? I'm um, about 6'5", I think. So they probably wouldn't mess with you too much anyway. Well, um, I got beat up quite, quite a bit. You know, I'm, I was scared. And you know, nobody could beat me running. I was the fastest runner in my neighborhood. You know, I got the big feet, you know, size 14 and a half. Some people say I have to walk backwards around a corner and keep from kicking a car. <laughs> <laughs> Floating boats on dry land, you know what I mean? <laughs> I've been called quite a bit of things, you know, duck. What's duck? Duck is a you know, flat feet. All know? right, duck. right. God. Well, Ted, you've got your guitar here now, uh, and uh, you might be kind enough, actually, to, uh, to play us a song here. All right. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, 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 boom. da 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 Here's an It's a sad heart that won't love like I know it should. And oh, how lonesome I know that you must be. It is a shame if you don't share. So hard yeah. when love is gone, and it's bad. You know it's even sad later on, and no one's. It's a shame if you don't share your love with me, and I can't help it.
What's that called, Ted? Share Your Love by um, a guy by the name of Kenny Rogers. Right. right. Point, I guess you would say I added a little more to it. <laughs> you might be kind enough to explain how you do the fade, actually, because when it goes quiet, you know, because uh, otherwise people might think that's a record, actually. You move well, away from the mic and stuff, huh? Uh, Sometimes I move around away from the mic, and this, this time I didn't do it. I just um, let up on the strings a little bit and wasn't hitting as hard as I, I was at first. And some ex so many years of experience. Right. How did you actually get into music, Ted? I mean, do you remember hearing it for the first time on the radio or a band or what, what happened? Well, as far as I can remember back, I've been able to sing. When I was um, 12 years old, I heard a man sing a song that brought tears to my eyes and caused me to cry. And I liked the feeling that it gave me. And so I kept trying to capitalize that feeling, you know, cap cap captivate that feeling from then on. And do you remember what kind of music it was that he was singing? It was a, a white guy by the name of Red Foley. All right. He was singing a song called um, Peace in the Valley. It's a beautiful song. I was just a child, and I didn't know anything about a good feeling. So it's got to be true that a song really do give you a good feeling. Well, particularly a song like that, because it's a spiritual. It's a spiritual. And did you ever go to uh, any of the kind of gospel churches or any of that stuff? I've been to church before um, um, the Holy Roly, they call it the uh, Sanctified Church, you know, where they really get down. <laughs> Tell us know. about that. Well, um, I had been to Baptist churches and all other kind of churches. I have never been to a Catholic church, but um, I like the, the pureness of the um, sanctification. Uh, I like, they say, you know, no smoking, you know, no uh, drinking and stuff. And I say, why? They say, well, you body is a temple of God and the Lord don't want to dwell in an unclean temple. And that made sense, uh, you know. Did you keep to it? Oh, well, um, <laughs> I did it, you know. I, I, I stopped doing it for a while, and, but uh, uh, when I was alone by myself, I'd take a few puffs when wasn't nobody was looking. Right. And, and what is the holy rolling type? Well, the holy roller, some people call it a sanctified church, holy roller church, and some people call it a holiness. The church, uh, the people who are trying to be sarcastic and smart and, and the ignorant, you know, call it holy roly. They, they're trying to say something to hurt the people's feelings, you know. And does everybody sing then? Hmm? Does everybody sing in those churches? Everybody sing, and, and if they feel good, they do a little dance. Really? Mm -hmm. if, if, if the spirit hit them, uh, they do a little dance. So the whole thing starts rocking then, really? And, uh, uh, yes, and what I like about them is they're so pure and clean, you know. And they're, um, they, they say, come out from among the, um, away from sin and stuff like that. And do they have any instrumentation then? Or is it all... Yes, uh, I've, I've known them to have organ and piano. Uh, I have great admiration and respect for um, religion. And has it been very important to you? It's important to me right now. Can you explain that? Can you try and I explain that? I feel that all good things come from God. It's impossible for the devil to manufacture anything good. Lots of people don't believe in God, but they will readily believe in Satan at the, at the, at the drop of a hat. And he don't deserve nothing because he was alive from the beginning. You know, and I don't think it's right, you know, for everybody to say there's no God, but they'll say, but it's a, it's a, it's a devil. Those same people that say it's not a God, if they uh, get into a car accident in the, um, the um, truck, you know, if, if all the rest of the body is okay, but the wheel is on his knee, and it just stay there and sit there. I bet you he won't call the devil. I bet you he'll holler, Lord have mercy. Really? But still, he don't believe in God, see. 
But the first person <laughs> he'll holler for is the Lord have mercy. The, the average person who says it's not a God is angry and pouting about something that they asked God to do a long time ago, and he didn't do it. They didn't get their own way. That's right. And, and the reason why he didn't get his prayer through is because of the fact that he didn't go about it in the right way. If I'm going to make a telephone call, if I don't dial the right number, you're not going to hear me, right? That's right. If I don't dial the right number, uh-huh. you've got to go through the proper channels. And just because of the fact that you didn't um, hear me, uh, or didn't pick up the phone, that don't mean that I'm supposed to d- dissolve friendship with you. It's my fault because I didn't go through the proper channels. Uh, and was there a point where this came home to you? Or were you like this from a child, or was there a point where you... Well, um, I've often... I've listened to atheists talk, you know, about ain't no God, but I picked up an apple, and I said, now, who knew I wanted this apple to taste like this? I could have very well been grazing in the grass with the cows and horses. Who knew I wanted an orange to taste this way? Somebody really, really must love me. I think I'll make him an orange. I know he'll like this. <laughs> you know what I mean? Who knew it? And what is the cause of that, um, all that water out there? You know, it, uh, it goes so far, but it don't come to us. Why? That's an answer to all that. And just because they don't know the answer, they want to say it ain't no God. Now, ain't that a shimmy, shimmy, stupid way to get out of things just because he don't know? Some people say, well... I don't know. I don't know. Well, you, you know, it's more to it than just I don't know. If everybody just sit around and say I don't know, I don't know, we wouldn't have had this um, bill in here. Somebody had to know to make a building. Right. See, uh, 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 there was a reason for all this. You know, something or somebody put it here that had a great intelligence. I'm telling you, a great intelligence built all this. I'm talking about the the sun. And hot and dangerous as that thing is that we call a sun, something or somebody had sense enough and love enough to keep it way away from <laughs> us so that it wouldn't burn us. Why? There's reasons for all that. And I want to know more so than just, it ain't no God. I don't want to hear that. I want to know more. I want somebody to tell me something, you know. And I don't want to talk to nobody who say it ain't no God because he ain't nothing but a fool from Jump Street. <laughs> you know what I mean? He, he'll make me angry. I don't even want to talk to him because I've talked to one before. I say, okay, um, I'll, my religion has been just like a, a blanket, a warm favorite blanket to me. I'll take my blanket and I'll lay it over there. Now, what do you have to offer? I ain't got nothing. I say, give me my blanket back and get out of my face. Uh, if you can't give me something better than what I got, don't tell me what I got is wrong. You know, I get angry. I don't want about it. To, the, the Lord has been good to me, and the devil ain't give me nothing but hurt. A person have to have something to believe in. You know, whether it's true or not, at least I have something to hold on to. And the people who ain't got nothing to hold on to, it would have been better if they had not been born. And have you always felt this way? Yes. Well, not always. But I've always had great admiration and respect for God. I, even when I was a child, I had sense enough to know that there had to be somebody or something over all this, just like there's somebody over this building. The building didn't come here on its own. Why should we say the world came here on its own? This microphone didn't come on its own. Somebody manufactured it. You know? Mm-hmm. And we're saying, and you believe that somebody manufactured the microphone because you saw somebody doing it, right? Right. But just because we didn't see nobody make the the earth don't make it less true. It's here. It's before our face. We see it. So it's the truth. It's just as true as a nose on your face. The fool have said in his heart, there's no God. Okay, well, I think we're going to have another little bit of music now, Ted. And in fact, we started off uh, the BPFO with Ted Hawkins here. We started off with the acoustic version of What's Your Step. So we're going to play the electric one. But before we uh, play the track, you might be kind enough to tell us what this song is about, What's Your Step. What's Your Step? Yeah. Uh, (laughs) What's Your Step. Uh, Well, um, this uh, this guy's talking to a girl. You know, um, he's... His, his girlfriend, you know, and uh, she'd been messing around, you know, um, taking him for granted, you know, uh, and going out with other guys. And he caught her, you know, kissing 
just 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 the the <laughs> just the uh, um, um, the um, you know run of the mill same old thing tapestry you know. of life yes <laughs> okay well here it is this is Ted Hawkins the electric version what's your step. There you go, folks. That's Ted Hawkins, the electric version of What's Your Step, caught Ted there in Midstrom. Ted, when we were talking about um, how you got into music, you said you heard Red Foley doing Peace in the Valley, right? Uh -huh. um, because the, the songs that you do of other people's on your records, I mean, it's very wide, isn't it? All the way from sort of Hank Williams to Sam Cooke mm -hmm. and everything. Yeah. Um, how come it's such a wide uh, area of music for you? You mean it's so, so different? Yeah. Well, you see, anything that, um, that um, squeezed my heart, I fall in love with it. And right. I try to learn it. Right. Um, there's anything can't get it here, okay? Anything is not just it just any song is not allowed in this heart. If I don't care what you say or how you like a song or how many people buy it or how big a hit it is, if I don't, if Ted Hawkins don't feel anything for it. And as far as I'm concerned, you know, it ain't nothing. And if it's if it's not worth me trying to learn, but I got to feel like. That feeling that Red Foley gave me, right. you know, that Peace in the Valley thing. Uh -huh. I wish you could hear that song. Then you know what I'm talking about. Mm. Peace in the Valley. It's a great song, actually. Mm -hmm. Brilliant song. So, reading about you and stuff, I've, I've I read that uh, for a while you kind of traveled around America and, and you, you were described, in fact, as a hobo. I was. I, they had the freight trains. They probably don't have them no more. Uh, they had the, the freight trains. I'd reach up and grab a freight train and swing myself in it and ride until I get tired and just get off anywhere. That's called a yard bird, isn't it? Yeah. And then I'd walk the, uh, just the, uh, the highways and there's nobody on that lonely highway but me and the sun is, is going down. I don't want darkness to catch me out there because, you know, on the right hand it, it's, it's dark, on the left it's dark, behind you it's dark and if you scared something going to get you and you, you start whistling. <laughs> Oh, it's okay. Ain't nobody going to get me now. <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know how you do. Right. You're scared. And, and uh, I, it's, it started raining. It's, it's, it's awful, man. And what was it like traveling in those trains? These, these were sort of uh, not it's, people it's, trains, it's, were they? It's not a, it's, it's a train that carried cargo. Right. Um, and it 
Uh, freight train, is, is, instead of going along smoothly, and then before you know it, it's vibrating. Your whole body is going like that. You're trying to sleep, and you wake up, and your whole body is so much so, and it cause you to cry out. You have to get up and stand up. Yeah. And that goes on all night. And I roll from Florida all the way to Chicago like that. Well, how many miles is that roughly? I don't know. It's halfway across America anyway, if not I rode for about three, about three, um, three nights, uh, you know, constantly. And what kind of folk would you meet on these, uh, on, on the trains and stuff? I didn't meet nobody this time on mine, you know, when I was in my car. You did it just the once, did you? Hmm? You did it just the once on the train? Oh, no, I, I got the train again after I left Chicago, and, but there was no cars, doors open you know, on, on the car. So I clammed up on top of it and I laid down on my belly. On top and, of the wagon? The train. Yeah. The, um, the box car. Right. And uh, it was cold. It was during the summertime. During, and the wind, the wind was hitting me in the face and I almost froze to death and I, I couldn't get off, you know. And and, I, and and it was cold. And what I did, I, I got up and I, I ran to the um, front in that big diesel it, every now and then the warmth would go over me, you know, and, and keep me warm. And I lay there, and I saw the sun rise. It, it was night. I dared not go to sleep and make a mistake and roll off. Right. How did you hold on? on? <laughs> How did you hang on? What do you hang on to then? then uh, that, there's two things that you uh, that you hold on to, that, that you're laying on. The, thing, the long thing that you walk on top. Oh, right. You know, you, you just hang on, hang on to that. I saw the sun rise. It must have been very frightening. The horizon. I wouldn't dare go to sleep. Right, right. And traveling these places, like on the trains or, or, or down the highways and stuff, where were you headed for, or did you know? I didn't know. Um, I, um, I jumped off the train when it came into the yard, it, and um, I'm glad I was lying down, because as I was coming to, to the yard, the, um, <laughs> the wires across, you know, was over my head. I suppose I'd have been standing up. It would have tripped me. <laughs> you know, but something say, lay down, Ted, stay there, Ted, you know. And did they try and uh, push you out of the uh, the railway yards and stuff like that? Um, I was so tired and hungry. I saw the police waiting on somebody who they and trying to catch somebody. And I could have walked on out of the freight yard, okay? Mm -hmm. But I saw them and I started walking toward them. You know, I said, I'm going to let them catch me so I can go to jail and uh, have breakfast and go to sleep. Maybe even get me a shower. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and so uh, I went, um, you know, in a hot, hot, hot. Oh, I said, man, I ain't running. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> so uh, they said, get in, get, get in this car. You, you was on a train. I said, no, man, I wasn't on a train. I just come in. Don't tell me you wasn't on a train. You was on a train. I was just passing through, officer. I wasn't on the train. That's very psychology. Child psychology that worked on an adult. <laughs> <laughs> Did they treat you good in the jail then? Huh? Did they treat you good in there? Yes. Uh, get in this car. Get in. Well, I, I got in and handcuffed me from behind. I don't, I don't like that because that kind of hurt the shoulders so long. You know? mm -hmm. Why don't they just take you on where they're going to take you? Why do they just sit there so long with your handcuffed behind you? In the car. And your shoulders are constantly hurting. You you want to scratch your nose and you can't. You know, what? They ain't doing nothing but, but scribbling on some paper or something, you know. But they let you sit there for about a, a half an hour. Take me on to jail, please. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think uh, we talk about maybe... If and I do... got there and I got all that, you know, that I wanted, you know. I got myself a nice bunk. It was nice and warm in there. And, and the breakfast was was coming, you know, and other guys was in there too, and I was hungry, hadn't eaten days, and my plate wasn't enough. They had something that, that I called Salisbury steak or something, something like that. What's and that? It ain't, it's some kind of a southern, look, look like a hamburger, right. you know, and, and uh, bitter coffee, and, um, and uh, the, the other guy, I said, I'm going have to have to have to have me some more of this food. I ate up all mine, and a guy had just come in, and I said, he said, it's a rotten deal. I said, yeah, man, it's a rotten deal. I ain't hungry, you. No, oh, man, I ain't hungry. I took you. I ate yours anyway. <laughs> you know, I ate his. That's two plates right there, you know. And I walk around in the place and see other guys so mad until they didn't want to eat. <laughs> I took theirs <laughs> and ate theirs. See, you don't get mad with those folks. You know what I mean? You, you did the crime, do the time. 
eat. Uh. It'll give you strength. <laughs> By you not eating, it's not going to make them turn you loose. Eat. Well, we talk, if we may, with your permission about uh, your jail situations afterwards. But first, I'd like uh, to ask you if you'd be kind enough to play us another song here, Ted. Okay. Do you want to tell us what it is? Uh, I think I'll do Dock of, Dock of the Bay. Right. Until the evening comes Watching the ships roll in Then I watch them roll away again Well, I'm just a sitting on the dock of the bay Watching the tides roll away Sitting on the dock of the bay Wasting time Nothing's gonna come my way So I'm just a sitting on the dock of the bay Watching the tides go away Sitting on the dock of the bay Wasting time Look like nothing's gonna change Do what ten people tell me. I guess I remain the same. Sit here, rest in my bones. But this loneliness won't leave me alone. Three thousand miles I roam just to make this dock my home. Well, I'm just a sitting on the dock of the bay, watching the tide. That's Ted Hawkins here live in the BPFO in the old Dutch's Reading song, Bless Him, Dock of the Bay. Ted, before you sang that piece of music, we were uh, talking about you being put in jail for riding the trains and stuff like that. <clears throat> and you said that you were delighted to go in there, you know, to get the food and mm -hmm. get cleaned up and stuff like that. But uh, I believe that wasn't the one and only time that you were actually put behind bars. Well, I've been in and out of trouble with the law all my life. Um, ever since I was a child, when I was a little kid, um, you, we used to shine shoes, and, and blacks weren't uh, allowed to shine shoes downtown. Really? And um, the police picked me up and put me in jail and called my wife, and um, my, called my, my, my uh, mother, and uh, wouldn't let me go, let her take me home until they witnessed her whooping me, you know, uh. beating my butt, you know, with the belt. I... My mother, in 1949, sent me to 
a place called Oakley Training School. You know, it's called what? Oakley Training School right. for little bad boys. And I stayed there three years. What was that like? It was uh, well, they, you had to learn how to fight and teach you how to take care of yourself, and you have to learn, you know, the the boys. It, it, it was a boy place, you know, and um, then ran by the superintendent and his wife. And um, she got up. She heard me singing and and uh, said that I had a good voice, and took me to a place called Jackson, Mississippi, and. She taught me a song called Somebody's Knocking at Your Door, and I, um, I froze. I was afraid to uh, go out on the stage, and she gave me a shove, and uh, <laughs> I went on out there and sang anyway, and I'm glad I did now. My little legs was like rubber. You know, I was, I was could not stand up. I was so scared. How old were you then? But I was about, um, about 13. Uh-huh. A guy when I was 15. And um, a guy talked me into going into a Harlem Davis motorcycle shop with him, you know, and I went in there and I didn't care about the motorcycles. I didn't have any clothes. And so I saw those motorcycle jackets with Harlem Davis written on the back of them, those two-tone, pretty, you know, black and silver motorcycle jackets. So I got me one of those and stupidly walking around in town with that on, the the police didn't have no trouble. (laughs) (laughs) I didn't know nothing. <laughs> and and, and they, um, they sent me to a um, place called Parchment Penitentiary. Um, Is that Parchment Farm? Parchment Farm. It's worse than um, uh, Cool Hand Luke. Tell me about it. Yeah, you saw Cool Hand Luke, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, they they had a sadist there. A sadist? Uh, a sadist. Yeah. And he um, get his sexual gratification from whooping black but butts, you know, and um, he was angry with me because I wouldn't holler. You know, almost beat me to death because I wouldn't holler. You know, I wouldn't let him ever go to holler and let him get his kicks off of me. I was prepared to die. You know, and I had to pick cotton. You know, and I had never picked cotton before. That was another good reason for him to whoop me. You know, because you have to pick two hundred pounds of cotton. Every day, not 199, 200 pounds, you know, 199 will make him beat you just as hard as he would beat you if you hadn't went out in the field at all. And this is while you were in Parchment Farm, the prison? Mm -hmm. I had never seen cotton before. I didn't even know that cotton grew. The only cotton I'd ever seen was in my pillar, you know, in, in my mattress. And I had to pick 200 pounds of that stuff. He knew I couldn't do it, and he was glad I couldn't. This way, they give him a chance to beat me. His name was Sergeant Cox. Never uh, forget him. And how did it work? Did uh, did the prisoners get hired out to the farms then, or something? The cotton farms. Hired. Yeah. Did the the jail get money for your labour then? I guess they did. Yeah. Because that's not entirely honourable either, is it? Yeah. I had the whole. It was very very hot out there too. It's called, it's called the uh, Delta. Very hot. And apart from being sent out to, to pick the cotton and, and the beatings and everything, were the conditions there in, in the jail really dreadful? Um, uh, I wasn't in a jail. We, we was in a, um, like a barracks, uh-huh. you know, a long barracks with beds on both sides uh-huh. all the way down. You know, and um, if you've got a sister, there are guys that have, that's got 50 years in life that will take care of you because you were... Um, you know, give him your sister's address, and you know his sister would write, you know, to him. You know, I didn't have any sisters. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have any sisters. See? You know, I had it hard. See, I didn't have nobody to come and meet me with a big handful of cotton and put it in my sack. You know, or help me to pick cotton, or, or, or to help me uh, to meet me on the uh, uh, turn row. You know. Right. Because is it, I was, I was, I've never felt so much alone in all my life of being in that place. And this is just for stealing the jacket. I didn't have any jacket. friends there at all. Hmm? It's for stealing the motorbike jacket. Yes. And yes. how long did you get for that? Thirty-one months and nine days, in fifteen minutes. God, that's a hell of a time, isn't it? Yeah, it was awful. And how did you feel when you came out? Did you feel at the time very bitter and resentful? Well, um, I've found out that bitterness is a cirrhosis that um, 
have a tendency to um, hurt the people more who are bitter than the ones that they are bitter against. Right. Because uh, when you're bitter uh, at somebody or if you're angry with somebody, uh, he don't even know you're angry. <laughs> you ain't hurt nobody but yourself. So I just have to go on with my life. Take the bitter with the sweet mm. and move on. Go on up the King's Highway. <laughs> you said that you've been in trouble uh, with, the, with the law all your life. Mm -hmm. um, what other inst instance, instances were there? Well, I tried to sell some dope once and didn't know what I was doing. Uh -huh. You know, and uh, I um, got in fights. You know, they call that disturbing the peace. And, um, I would go to places like, like Vacaville, you know. Um, Vacaville is a place where they uh, take, send the mentally ill. I went um, to Vacaville uh, uh, um, because I didn't want to go to, to a place called San Quentin or uh, to, um, what you call this place? Uh, Silent Dead. Uh, where? Silent Dead. Um, um, you know, these hard places. Uh, Vacaville was a place, you know, where, uh, uh, like a country club, you know, and the only way you can get there is uh, be crazy. And so when the moment the police picked me up, I jumped crazy. And what did you do? You know, <laughs> well, I, I, no, uh, I, um, I convinced them, you know, enough, you know, because everything you do is written down. Right. In, in any way that you act is written right. down. And the jurors see that, and this is back of your material here. Uh -huh. See what I'm saying? Uh -huh. And, I, and all, the guys that's got all the sense wind up in the hard places, you know, and probably get stuck with a knife and kill. And me, with my old crazy self, I go to the country club. Now, who's crazy? Good question, Ted. Well, uh, while we think about that, you might be kind enough to sing us another song, if you would, please. Ted Hawkins there and uh, let the good times roll. Come on, let the good times roll. In fact, the good times have rolled very fast, Ted. And uh, we're nearly up to 10 o'clock, so I'd, I'd like to thank you very much for talking to us and, and singing and stuff. I've enjoyed it enormously, and I'm sure everyone listening has enjoyed it very, very much. Thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. That's a pleasure. So uh, we're going to go out uh, with a little bit of uh, a Ted Hawkins uh, song, and this is Bring It Home, Daddy. So, Ted, thanks again. God bless you. Okay. 
Boom, boom, boom. 